Part 4, Physics, October, November 2015, Paper 12. Question 29. White light consists of many wavelengths. The wavelength of red light R is approximately twice the wavelength of violet light B. When white light is incident normally, on the diffraction grating, several spectra can be observed. So white light consists of seven colors with GR, and they have already mentioned the wavelength of R is twice the length wavelength of violet light, which they're going to mention it as V. Which diagram shows the possible distribution of light in the first order and the second order spectra? So I got this from a book for the explanation. So when white light strikes the diffraction grating, you will get spectra like this. So it will be in this pattern. The center, that is the zero order, will be white light because all the colors will be having path difference of a zero. Uh, as a result, uh, all of them will combine and again form white light. This is the first order on the either side and this is second order. The formula that we use for diffraction grating is N lambda is equal to D sine theta. N is the number of order, that's the first order and second order in this case. Theta is the angle between the spectra to the zero order. Uh, distance, I mean, D is the diffraction grating separation. Lambda is the wavelength. Now, as you can see from this formula, if the lambda is greater, then sine theta will be greater. So you should know one thing. So if you have a graph, theta and sine theta. So if you have a graph sine theta against theta, your graph will increase and decrease. So if you're going to get this pattern, so you will get sine theta to increase up to theta is 90 degree. So what do we know? We know that when theta increases up to 90 degree, our sine theta is also increasing. So red has a wavelength greater than violet. So when wavelength is greater, sine theta is also greater. As a result, theta is also greater than violet. So you can always observe that red color stays on the top of all other colors because uh, red is having the greatest wavelength of all the colors. And violet will be at the lower end because it has the least wavelength. So as you can observe from here, violet stays above red. So this is not the answer. Here is also the same case. So this is not the answer. And you can see here red is on the top. So this could be the answer. Or you can see here they are on the top. So this could be the answer. So now we need to know whether they are having equal interval of theta or is going to vary. So as we know that when we have first order, you'll have one theta, you can see this diagram. If we have two, this theta will be different, which is not equal to the sum of two times theta. I'm sorry, what I mean is uh, it will have a different level. So theta is greater uh, than this theta. So as you can see, this is not the same interval. You will not get this type of pattern. So in other words, I'm saying that there will be not a linear increase in theta because it's a periodic function. So it will vary this theta 
and this angle is not same, it will vary. So as a result, the answer is C. Question 30. To produce a stationary wave, two waves must travel in opposite direction through the same space. Which statement about the property of the two waves must also be true? So if we have to get a stationary wave, let's take this as two boundaries. So stationary wave is the superposition of a wave along with its reflect reflected wave, which means the wavelength of both the waves should be same. They should travel in opposite direction. Their frequency should be same. Their speed should be same. All the properties should be same, except that they should travel in opposite direction. So let's go through the choices. Option A, the wave must have equal frequency. That's correct. But different speed and wavelength, this part is wrong. So option A is not the answer. The wave must have the equal speed, have equal speed, which is correct. Different wavelength and frequency, that's wrong. The wave must have equal speed, equal frequency and wavelength, which is right. The waves must have equal wavelength, but different speed and frequency. So that's wrong. So the option is C. I hope you all understood. So I have mentioned here, a stationary wave is the result of interference between two waves of equal frequency amplitude traveling along the same line with the same speed, but in opposite direction. So the only difference is that they should travel in the opposite direction. Question 31, a potential difference is applied between two metal plates that are not parallel. Which diagram shows the electric field between the plates? We all know if the distance is shorter, the greater the electric field strength. That means the spacing of the electric field lines should be closer. So it cannot be equal because they have mentioned it's not parallel. So reject the options which have parallel electric field lines. So you can see this one is also of the same equidistance. So it's of the equidistance, so that's not the answer. And now we have greatest electric field strength with, when they are placed closer. So the answer should be A or D. If they are not parallel, they'll not have a straight line. They'll have a curved line like this. Therefore, the option is A. Question 32. The particle situated between two parallel metal plates carries a charge of 8 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. The potential difference between the plates is 2000 volt, a force of 3.2 10 to the power minus 13 newton due to the electric field acts on the particle. What is the distance between the plates? So it's a parallel plate which uh, carries a charge of this amount. Potential difference between the plates is given. The force due to the electric field strength is given. We get to find the distance between these parallel plates. So we know that electric field strength is equal to force per unit charge. Making force as the subject, we get it as force is equal to EQ. Since we don't know the value of electric field strength, we also know electric field strength is equal to the potential gradient, which is V over D. We know the voltage, which is 2000 volt. 
distance is what we have to find. Charge is given as 8 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Force is given as 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 13. Make D as the subject. So take it to the other side. Use a calculator. You will get this answer. 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter, which is equal to 5 millimeter. You can see the option is A. Question 33. Which unit is equivalent to a coulomb? Coulomb is charge and we know that current is equal to rate of flow of charge. So Q into Q by T. So charge is equal to IT. So current is given in amps and time is given in second. So the answer is AS, which is option a. If the answer is option A. Question 34. The graph shows the IV characteristic of an electric component. So when we take the gradient of I over V, we get 1 over R. That's coming from the Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So I over V will give me one over R. This side, there is no flow of current, but this side, there is an increase in current whose gradient is really high. Whose gradient is almost going to reach infinity. So gradient is high, which means resistance is low, which allows the current to flow. But the other side, the current is not flowing. That means if the equipment is reversed, there is no current flow. So this part shows the forward biased diode, and this side shows the reversed biased diode. So this IV graph represents a diode, a semiconductor diode. So the answer is C. Question 35. A power supply of EMF 12 volt and an internal resistance to ohm is connected in series with a load resistor. The resistance of the load resistor varies between 0 0.5 to 4 ohm. Which graph shows how the power dissipated in the load resistor varies with the resistance of the load resistor? For this type of question, if you don't know the real, if you don't know the basic concept, what you can do is you can give fake values uh, for the load resistor, which is less than 2. That means between 0 0.5 to 2, then 2 and 2 to 4, any values, three values, and check which will give the correct graph. If not, there is this thing that you need to know. A battery delivers a maximum power to a circuit when the load resistor of the circuit is equal to the internal resistance. So in this case, internal resistance is to ohm. So if your load resistor is also to ohm, then you will get the greatest power. So this is the diagram. If your load resistor is equal to your internal resistor, you get the greatest power. So in this case, if we have a two ohm load resistor, then we'll get the greatest power. So you can see all these diagram takes a different pattern, which is not correct. At two ohm, which is equal to your internal resistor, you have the greatest power. Therefore, the option is A. Question 36. The diagram shows an arrangement of resistors 
what is the total resistance between X and Y? So just imagine there is this power supply, that's the battery along this junction X and Y. There is this circuit current I. When it comes to this junction, it splits. So this is let let me take it uh, take it as I one. Let me take it as I two. So as you can see, this I two is going to pass through this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor. So these three resistors, 10, 10, 10, all are in series. So 30 ohm is in series with 10 ohm. When there is a split in current, that means that circuit is in parallel. When the same current passes through the resistors, then they are in series. So if you find it difficult, you can imagine like this. This is 30 ohm resistor is in parallel with a 10 ohm resistor. So you can use any formula. One over R is equal to one over 10 plus one over 30. I've taken the LCM and reciprocate. So I got 7.5 ohm, which is between one ohm to 10 ohm. So the answer is B. Question 37, the electromotive force of a power supply is 120 volt. It delivers a current of 1.2 amp to a resistor of resistance 80 ohm and a current 0 0.40 ampere to another resistor. What is the internal resistance of the power supply? It's easy for us to find the voltage here because we know the current and the resistance, but we also know since these resistors are in parallel, they share the same voltage. Now the question is internal resistance. There is an in internal resistance, so there should be a lost voltage. So the voltage that we are going to find here is going to be the terminal voltage. So the terminal voltage is 1.2 into 80. So if you multiply 1.2 into 80, you get 96. If you subtract from the EMF, you will get 24 volt. That is our lost volt. Lost volt is equal to circuit current into the internal resistance. So you have to divide your lost volt by the circuit current. The circuit current, you can find it by the addition of both, which is 1.2 ampere plus 0 0.40 ampere, which is equal to 1.6. When you divide, the internal resistance is 15 ohm. Therefore, it is option A.